We've been talking about the king of the north and the king of the south, and the king of the south represents atheism. Mrs. White says that the, the land of Egypt that's spoken of in Revelation chapter 11, that that, uh, that land that was spoken of, spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom for that matter, are correlated to France during the French Revolution. And France is, is the atheistic power that represents Egypt in the last days. So it's, it goes way far beyond France. Way far. We'll talk a little bit about France today too. It goes way beyond France. This is a spiritual kingdom that's throughout the world. Because atheism leads to a certain... What, what, is, what is atheism science? Evolution. What is their form of government? Communism. Socialism, man saving man, right? All these elements are all wrapped together in what we understand as the king of the south. And the king of the north represents the very opposite of those things. Well, at least in theory. And that is uh, religious tyranny. You see, there's no good guys in the king of the north, king of the south fight. This Hegelian fight that's going on between the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the north represents ecumenism. The king of the north style government is feudalism from the dark ages or fascism as we would call it today. Picking and choosing who the winners are. So we find out what the fate of Egypt or what the fate of atheism is going to be according to the Bible. And I wanted to read this quote again from Des Griffin's book, Descent into Slavery, page 38 and 39, where he talks about the three world wars and what was to take place after the three world wars because after the three world wars they were to unleash they were to unleash this this social calamity on the world and the social calamity would be rooted in atheism now albert pike is not a prophet right he's not a prophet he was a he was a luciferian by his own admission in the book morals and dogma so how does he know what the plan is that spans centuries because this has been the plan for those who have been initiated for that for that much time and even longer this is what they say will happen this is Lucifer's plan folks it says here I'm just gonna pick up because I read the whole one last time the third world war was to be planned as a res uh, result from differences stirred up by the Illuminati agents between the Zionists and the Arabs. That's the fights that we've been seeing going on for quite some time in the Middle East. The conflict was planned to spread worldwide and it, it has. It has. It wasn't as devastating as the First and Second World War, but it certainly has spread worldwide to every country. The it goes on. The Illuminati said, uh, said the letter planned to unleash the nihilists and atheists and provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism. This is what we're seeing today, folks. I'm going to stop right there. This is what we're seeing going on today. This is what's happening. Absolute atheism, nihilism, uh, the social cataclysms that we're seeing. We see this where? On the left or the right? Well, we, see it, we do see it on both, but primarily we're seeing this into the far radical left. The far radical left are those who are the militant atheists. On the right, the core, the heart and soul of the right is conservative evangelicals. Conservative evangelicals. So this is part of the plan. Origin of savagery in the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but, knowing, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into the public view. What do we know as Seventh-day Adventists what the final movement will be? A Sunday law. So a Sunday law is the pure doctrine of Lucifer. 
And I can explain this in two ways. Number one, has Lucifer always been, uh, has Luc uh, does, what is Lucifer's relationship to the law of God? He hates the law of God, right? So the pure doctrine of Lucifer will be something that attacks the commandments of God. That's one. Number two, throughout all the centuries of, of darkness of the world of paganism, whether you go to the jungles of the Amazon or to the deserts of the Middle East, what was the thing that everyone worshipped? The sun god. The sun god. So you have some, the pure doctrine of Lucifer will be something that involves sun worship and is totally antithetical or against the commandments of God. In a, in a phrase, the Sunday law. That's the pure doctrine of Lucifer they're talking about. A return to the dark ages. It goes on, it says, a manifestation which will result from the general reactionary movement. You see, there's a movement that pushes in one way, and, and the plan of the occultists, of the Illuminati, of Rome, is to, is to coerce a reactionary movement back the other way, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. True Christianity will be, will be exterminated when the whole world decides to become Christian and instead of following Christianity, they start imposing upon the liberties and liberty of conscience and the mind of man with a Sunday law. Atheism, however, atheism has been used by the Illuminati, by Rome, for centuries as a boogeyman, as a weapon, as a punishment weapon. And they plan on eventually, once it's done its job for them, they plan on destroying that weapon. It's exactly what we read in Daniel chapter 11. We'll get there again. The communist slogan from Karl Marx in his book, The Communist Manifesto, a man, a man so adverse to work that members of his own family starved because he was so lazy. A man who basically just drank and partied his whole life, who had to borrow money from the other author of this book multiple times just to continue his lifestyle, the man Frederick Engels. He said, our enemy is God. Hatred of God is the beginning of wisdom. So, if we look at the spiritual kings again, you have the king of the south, which is literal Egypt, or the land of unbelief. You have the king of the north, which is literal Babylon, or the land of Babylon, which is the land of false religion. In there, you have, for the king of the south, you have atheism, humanism, or human rights, communism, militant atheism, socialism, anarchy, the alt-left, evolution, a spiritual kingdom throughout the world. There's communists in every country. What does it lead to? It leads to a religious tyranny, or tyranny without religion. That's what Stalin had. The king of the north, on the other hand, is false religion, false doctrines. It claims to be in God's place, but is actually his enemy. This is pagan, papal Rome that did this type of stuff. Fascism, feudalism, serfdom, the alt-right, a spiritual kingdom throughout the world. Again, there's Catholics in every country. Every country. It's a spiritual kingdom. It leads to religious tyranny. Both claim to have answers for, you, for humanity. Both are actually the enemies of God and man. And these, these ideals, we see them both right there in the book Patriarchs and Prophets, page 119, talking about, talking about the Tower of Babel. Atheism was there at the Tower of Babel. Babel is also the cornerstone for the development of all the pagan religions and sun worship that we see. So they both have the same, the same starting point. It's interesting. Mrs. White says this, the dwellers of the plain of Shinar disbelieved God's covenant that he would not again bring a flood upon the earth. Many of them denied the existence of God and attributed the flood to the operation of natural causes. How about that? Atheism at the Tower of Babel. 
Other, others believed in a supreme being and that it was he who had destroyed the antediluvian world and in their hearts, like that of Cain, rose up in rebellion against him. Both, both sides, right? Both sides, right there, has their roots, Tower of Babel. One object before them in the erection of the tower was to secure their own safety in case of another deluge. So you have the spiritual king's war. You have the king of the south and you have the king of the north. Spiritual unbelief or atheism, communism, socialism, social justice falls into there. Wokeness today falls into there. Marxism, uh, democracy without, without republicanism, right? The, the left. This is the game they're playing with us, folks, polarizing the nation. And so you say, you know what? I want nothing to do with that. So what do you do? You make a 180 and you run into the, the arms of Rome on the other side. <laughs> the king of the north, Catholicism and her spiritual allies, her spiritual allies of ecumenism. Can two walk together except they be agreed? How could we ever have a single meeting with Rome. How? How? Except to give them the third angel's message. <coughs> Fascism, totalitarianism, monarchies, oligarchies, the divine right of kings that we saw during the Dark Ages, Nazism or the right, these are the extreme versions of those. Right? Usually the answer is somewhere in the middle, right? This is what the alt left and the alt right are. Even Hitler acknowledged that, that the Jesuits are the source for both, both communism and fascism. Hitler said this. This is from uh, the book, The Jesuits' History and Legend of the so Society of Jesus, written in 1984, page 266. Hitler said, above all, I have learned from the Jesuits. And so did Lenin, too, so far as I recall. The world has never known anything quite so splendid as the hierarchical structure of the Catholic Church. There were quite a few things I simply appropriated from the Jesuits for the, uh, for the use of the party. It's a typo there. For the use of the party. So, quite interestingly, I don't know if you guys know this, but Sigmund Freud... Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler were all in Vienna at the same time when they were in college. Do you know that? And there was one other person that was there too. I forgot who it was. But those individuals, all three of them, became very instrumental in the ideologies that they proposed. Mrs. White, in the book Education, page 228, she says that the principles of France, the atheistic principles of France will spread throughout the entire world and will cause will cause destruction and mayhem and turmoil and bloodshed throughout the entire world. Sounds like a time of trouble to me. This is what Mrs. White says. The book again, Education, page 220, 228. Ellen White says, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many, the combinations of the poor classes for the defense of their interests and claims. This is unions versus, you know, the 1%. The spirit of unrest, of riot and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution are all tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed in France. What happened in France? Are people, are people frustrated with their political leadership today? Oh yeah, on both sides actually. That's something that the left and the right could probably agree on. They hate the political class. What did France do to their political leaders when they 
were frustrated with their political leaders. That's where we're tending, folks. We're tending towards a reign of terror, except this time it's not going to be a local one in France. It's going to be throughout the entire world. And Rome would have it so. You want to say something? Where's the, where's the microphone? I was going to say, that's why they're trying to take out Trump. That's why they're trying to take out Trump? Yeah. Well, have you looked at... There, there's a whole other discussion and topic there, Richard, I think. Um, but there's a... I don't want to go there necessarily right now, but I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I absolutely hear what you're saying. So Mrs. White says those doctrines. And the teachings, folks, it doesn't just start, it, it doesn't just uh, end with France and the French Revolution. Most of the teachings that, we, that are destroying the societies that we live in today have their roots in France or French thinkers, not just from the time of the French Revolution, but beyond that. Communism, deism, those, those started in France. Even William Miller. William Miller was a deist for a time. And what was he reading? He was reading Voltaire, the French philosopher. It was the, it was the, the writings of Voltaire and Rousseau that helped to facilitate the type of mindset that led to the French Revolution. This pushing away of God, this, this clockmaker version of God, stepping in towards atheism. It was France. France was the first country in the modern era to allow homosexuality, to, to make it legal. They did that in 1791, two years after the start of the French Revolution. The Declaration of Human Rights, their, their slogan, Liberty, Equality, Fraternity. The National Assembly, Voltaire, Rousseau. Deism and Atheism, Voltaire. Postmodernism comes from Jean-Francois Loyotard. He's, one of, he's, the, he's the father of postmodernism, these French thinkers. Gender th theory came from a, a French philosopher named Foucault. This understanding that, that gender is a social construct comes from a French philosopher. Communism, socialism, from the French Revolution facilitated by the Illuminati. The father of the New Age movement, his name, he's a Jesuit priest, his name is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. He was also involved in the Piltdown Man hoax, trying to prove a missing link which was tampered with evidence. Feminism, uh, she didn't, she's not the founder, but um, one of the main proponents of it, Simone de uh, Beauvoir. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, that's him right there. He took part in creating a fake missing link. He was a Jesuit priest, and the things that he wrote, he's considered the father of the New Age movement. Here's a quote from him. Someday, after we have mastered the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for the second time in the history of the world, humanity will have discovered fire. The love gospel stuff, all that stuff comes from him. This is France giving us garbage. And hey, I'm French, okay? I have, a French, I have French in my blood. I'm probably mostly French. So I'm not saying anything about France or the French people. I'm saying the atheism that began there in the French Revolution, it hasn't stopped since then. The principles of communism come from France. It comes from... The terms, the left and the right, come from France. That's where those who, who, were, who were more liberal and more pro-democracy, they sat on the left side of the National Assembly and they were called the left in France. That's where it comes from. The right, those who were more conservative, who eventually a lot of them got killed, they sat on the right side of the National Assembly. So a communist defector named Yuri Bezmenov, he tells us what they do in nations to destroy a nation. 
This is about a six minute video. The, the title of the video is KGB Defector Yuri Bezmenov's Warning to America. This interview was in 1984 by the man G. Edward Griffin, the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island. By the way, just so you know, G. Edward Griffin, phenomenal, um, phenomenal researcher, but he thinks that communism is the problem in the last days. He doesn't see past that. He doesn't see past towards Rome, okay? This video was uh, on offensive freedom. It was posted in 2020. Let's take a listen. Mr. Bezmianov was born in 1939 in a suburb of Moscow. He was the son of a high-ranking Soviet Army officer. He was educated in the elite schools inside the Soviet Union and became an expert in Indian culture and Indian languages. He had an outstanding career with Novosti, which was the and still is, I should say, the press arm or the press agency of the Soviet Union. It turns out that this is also a front for the KGB. He escaped to the West in 1970 after becoming totally disgusted with the Soviet system, and he did this at great risk to his life. He certainly is one of the world's outstanding experts on the subject of Soviet propaganda and disinformation and active measures. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's over fulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success most of it is done by americans to americans thanks to lack of moral standards as i mentioned before uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore a person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information the facts tell nothing to him uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. Then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy. Uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. 
the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis, to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition and to put a big brother government in Washington DC with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists in, in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defenders, they are instrumental in the process of the, of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation. When their job is completed, they are, non, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. Some of them, when, when they get disillusioned, when they see that Marxist-Lenin has come to power, they, obviously they get offended. They think that they will come to power. That will never happen, of course. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. But they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist, he was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babra Karman with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. The, the time bomb is ticking. I encourage you guys to, to look this man up. He was, he was a KGB agent. He worked in India. He knows what he's talking about. And there's so much stuff that he said. I, I could sit up here probably for another hour and a half and unpack just what he said in those six minutes. Have you seen the things that he's talking about? Have you seen that happen in this country? So it, it, did it happen organically then? Of course not. It's an agenda. And it's meant to provoke a reactionary movement. Paul? And again, Cody, it comes back to, to Nazism and World War II. Yeah. They did not lose that war. No, Here is the proof. Because these things took place there. From the 1920s to the 1930s, this is exactly what went on in Nazi Germany. And it was the Roman Catholic, well, said he wasn't, monk, that yes. wrote the book. That's right. He wrote the book. The inflation, everything was there. Yes. Yep. It's exactly the same. But, and then I'll shut up. But we know the outcome. Because when the devil gets what he wants, he ain't going to enjoy it. Because two weeks and it's all coming down. That's right. One hour. One prophetic hour. And so, folks, right here in the United States, we're, we're, we're between a rock and a hard place. And it's, we've done it to ourselves. We've been selfish. We rejected the message of 1844. We rejected that message. Evangelicalism has been spiraling since. And we are not a good nation. We're an evil nation now, and I mean the people. I don't mean the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. But the people, the substance of it, we're evil. And so now Satan has got us between a rock and a hard place. And it's, at, it's the point in time when the ship has gone so far that they can see they're about to hit something, but they lack the ability to turn the wheel fast enough to avoid impact. That's where we're at. So, as James Atkin Wiley stated in his book, the Jesuits are okay with two different forms of government, and we the people get to decide 
which tyranny we're going to fall under. Either we cannot fight back against this institutional power and we can become communists. That's one option. Number two, we fight back against it using the tools, and Yuri Bezanov will tell you the only thing that can defeat communism is God. That's it. People's belief in God is the only thing that can combat the ideals of Marxism. And so what people are going to do, Daniel Levin says, is that people are going to react against it, but they're going to establish a religious tyranny, a return to the Dark Ages. Daniel chapter 11, verse 40 says, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. That's 1798. Who pushed at the king of the north? Who pushed at the papacy in 1798? France, when they overthrew her power. When General Berthier marched the French armies into Rome and took away all of her authority, took away all of her papal states, the papacy went into exile, and they declared the Roman Republic there. It says, And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Verse 41, He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. And he shall stretch forth his hand against uh, also upon the countries and the land of Egypt or atheism shall not escape but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy to utterly make away many and we'll get into that next time and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. That's how this ends. So the king of the south, verse 40, that's when the French general Berthier came and deposed the pope, took away his papal states. Now, whirlwind, a little case study. What does whirlwind mean according to the Bible? Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 19 through 20 says, Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. When, when it says the king of the north shall return like a whirlwind, it means total and utter destruction of the king of the south. Atheism will be destroyed. We will be a religious world again, but it will not be a good thing this time. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 27, again, whirlwind. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Psalm 58, verses 8 through 10, it says, As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun before your pots can feel the thorns. He shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Hosea chapter 8, verses 6 and 7, it says, For from Israel was it also, the workmen made it. Therefore it is not God, but the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind, it shall not, it, uh, it, it hath no stock, the bud shall yield no meal, if so be it yield, the strangers shall swallow it up. It means total destruction. So when the king of the north comes against the king of the south, the Bible is telling us that there's going to be a reactionary movement, just like Albert Pike said. You see, you got, you got, you got sources on both sides telling you this is going to happen. The king of the north is going to destroy atheism. But it's not a real battle. It's the Hegelian dialectic. It will be real. The blood will be real. The deaths will be real. But it's a spiritual war. 
And so you get to choose. You have three options. You can choose the communist camp and be destroyed. You can choose despotism in the form of religious false revival and you can be spiritually destroyed. Or you can keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ and get this three angels message out to the world. And your body may be destroyed, it may not if you're one of the 144,000. But your soul will be saved. We see the pushing. This has been going on since 1798. Since 1798, the world's not being overcome by Turkey over and over again. The world's been overcome since 1798 by different factions of communism, whether it's in Africa, which has taken over almost the whole country there, or whether it's socialism and the versions that have taken over Western civilization. Russia has been taken over by communism. South America has been taken over by different variations of socialism and all the promises of Chavez. Remember those promises of Chavez in the 1990s? Where has that left Venezuela today? The King of the South is pushing. It's still pushing. The Great Reset is corporate communism. The year is 2021. America is now communist. Kamala Harris posts video promoting communism for America. That's what we're choosing. We're choosing between communism and despotism. So we'll close with this. Pretty sure I went over time, but sorry about that. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 48. Mrs. White says, The Bible will never be superseded by miraculous manifestations. The truth must be studied. It must be searched as for hidden treasure. Wonderful illuminations. Oh, sweet. Okay. I actually am I'm within the time constraints today. All right. No, I usually... I'm Sorry, guys. I usually go over but okay the truth must be studied it must be searched for as hidden treasure wonderful illuminations will not be given aside from the word or to take the place of it cling to the word receive the engrafted word which will make men wise unto salvation mrs white says in the book the great controversy the only only way to be able to tell the difference between the deception and the reality is by comparing it with the Word of God. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is some, no, no light in them. Mrs. White, Great Controversy, page 593. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scriptures. The last day movement will appear to be a good one. That's what you need to be on guard for. That's the point I'm trying to make. Is the King of the South evil? Everything with... Yes. Yes, it is. But the, the other thing that they're offering you in its place is a trap. That's what I'm trying to tell you. By their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be tested. They will have miracles in evangelicalism and in Roman Catholicism. They will. The only way we'll be able to tell the difference is if we are a people of the book and if we know our Bibles. That's our only safety. Our only safety in these last days. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the true she's not talking about communism you know deceiving people that's the, that doesn't closely resemble the true does it does ecumenism closely resemble the true yes yes it does except for those who have eyes to see